Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to tonight's event, Finding Your Fit, Researching and Choosing the Right College. My name is Kelly Wheeler, and I am going to be your host this evening. We are so excited to have you here. And on behalf of everyone at ECT, thank you so much for joining us this evening. I am really excited that I get to be the one to introduce our incredible speakers um, tonight from College Wives. But before we get to that part, I want to cover some basic housekeeping um, tips and tools that you might find helpful to increase your viewing experience. So you'll see several widgets on your home screen. You are in complete control of those. They are resizable, they're movable, so you're welcome to move them around to get the most out of your screen space, however you'd like to do that. Um, in addition, there's going to be a copy of tonight's slides in the resources tool. So if you're scrambling to take last minute notes or get everything down on the slide, just remember those are available to you as well as some other handy items. And that again is in that resources tool section of your screen. Um, after this event, you will get an email recording of the event within roughly one to two weeks. So if you're wanting to go back and rewatch this event, look for that email and again, one to two weeks and you'll get that recording of tonight's event. Just kind of a general reminder that we encourage the use of high speed and stable internet. Um, close any extra browsers that you have open. And if you're streaming Netflix or have other things going on, try to close those down and that'll hopefully help with your viewing experience. Um, it does take quite a bit of bandwidth to have the webinars. And if you do run into any troubles, try to do a hard refresh or hit control F5 and it should fix any lagging or sound issues that you're experience, experiencing. If you are struggling with anything else tonight, go ahead and check that help tool at the bottom of your screen. And again, if you need a refresher on any of this during the event, go ahead and click that um, help, help button at the bottom of your screen. Um, there's a helpful webinar viewing tips and reminders guide that you can find there. And that'll remain again visible throughout the entire webinar. So now that we have those kind of general helpful info out of the way, I get to introduce our college wise friends and they're going to tell you a little bit more about themselves and jump into the presentation. Enjoy. Kelly, thank you so much for that warm welcome. And thank you to ACT for having College Wise. And thanks for all of you for joining us tonight. Um, I am excited to talk to you about finding that right fit. And we're going to introduce College Wise and ourselves as speakers. But first, we want to hear a little bit about you. So I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll right now. Um, so you're going to see some blue buttons there, options, please click it and then hit submit so we can see who is joining us tonight. Um, so the question is, let's learn more about you. I am a, a parent or guardian, a student, or a parent and guardian with student, um, or a counselor and educator. So go ahead and fill that out. Um, all right, looks like we're getting some responses. I'm going to give it about 30 seconds um, to give you some time. It looks like answers are filling in. Um, just make sure you hit that submit button at the bottom. Okay, it looks like we have a good chunk of people. So here's your last chance. Go ahead, click the option and hit submit. Um, and it looks like we've got a, a smattering, a mix. So um, welcome everyone and our uh, counselors and educators there too. Um, okay, second question for you. What graduation year are you? Or if you are a counselor or educator, just talk about the biggest cohort of students that you work with. Um, so you'll have four options of grad years here, 2024, 2025, 2026, or 2027. And again, I'm going to give it about 30 seconds. If you are younger than 2027, um, you can go ahead and still pick that option. Um, and like last time, make sure that you also hit that submit button.
All right, looks again like some responses are trickling in. And then I will give you last chance, go ahead and hit submit. Um, okay, no uh, surprise, we have a lot of current seniors who are on, um, and then we have a good number of 2027, so planning ahead, which is fantastic. So our speakers are going to speak um, about that, you know, how you can start get getting ahead and thinking about uh, finding the right school for you. Um, first, let's introduce CollegeWise. So our mission is to be the most trusted source of information when it comes to all things about applying for higher education. Uh, and how do we actually do this? Um, we are a self-proclaimed collection of nerds, um, experts in counseling, admissions. We have many former admissions officers, um, testing experts, financial aid experts. And as a collective hive mind, we spend a lot of time tracking what's happening in admissions what universities are saying that they think about and care about. We do a lot of research. We attend a lot of information sessions and conferences, and then we put that information back out there for families. Um, so our goal is that you can always turn to us. We have done this since 1999, so we've done it for 24 years now. And we support families in three ways. So the first one, free resources, so webinars like this one, we have many of them. We also publish a lot of blogs, eBooks, guides. Um, there are a couple of resources available for you during this webinar, so you can peruse those. Second thing is that we do have um, paid services where you can work with one of our experts to guide you through your high school admissions process. Um, so building up your high school profile, applying for university, finding that right fit. And then that third piece of it is that we work with schools, school counselors, and districts to provide services for their families as well. Um, so you'll see a little bit of college rise here, and I'm excited to say that we've actually helped over 28,000 students now. Um, and I have two of our counselors who are going to be speaking tonight. So I'm going to introduce our first one, Karen. Um, so Karen has worked in many different spaces in education, as you can see in these bullets here. Um, she's actually been such a counseling expert that she has set up counseling programs for many schools. Um, one thing you will not see in bullets is just uh, the feeling that I see that families have when they work with her. Um, she's just known for having a really reassuring presence um, and making sure that families can have their best relationship and their um, final time together when a student is in high school. So I'm excited you get to hear from her. Um, because she has been such a reassuring voice for so many students. And then we also have Allison, who is uh, one of our master counselors, um, and she has been at CollegeWise since 2007. So she's helped over 500 students. Um, she also leads our learning and development team. So all those experts that we bring in that work on all things around being the most trusted source in admissions, Allison really guides the uh, hiring for those people and then making sure that we are up to date on all of the trends. Um, and Allison has actually also been leading a program called Excellence in College Counseling with the Common App um, and Reach Hire, Michelle Obama's nonprofit. Um, so she is uh, working in many different capacities when it comes to getting this information out there. And then who am I? I'm the CEO of CollegeWise. So my goal is to make sure that we are acting on this mission and we're able to help um, hundreds of thousands of students with our information each year. Um, I really loved my university experience. So this topic is very close to home for me. Um, I was fortunate to get a full merit scholarship to go to Duke called the Robertson. Um, and a large part of the reason that I received that scholarship was that I had done a lot of work in education when I was in high school myself. And so my love of education and specifically a focus on helping high school students has continued throughout my career. Um, so I've worked in many different capacities um, with large educational institutes like the US Department of Education and with organizations like CollegeWise um, where I've been for the last two years. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and jump in now that we know a little bit about you and you know about us. Um, so the college landscape can feel quite overwhelming. There are actually over 4,000 different colleges within the U.S. 
So that begs the question, how do you actually figure out what are the right ones for you? And we have three big priorities that we consider here. So the first is if the college actually meets your aspirations, does it have the things that you want to study and will it set you up for what you want to do? Are you able to get admitted with, into that college and what you need to do to prepare for that? And the final piece, can you afford that college? We won't speak as much about the affordability, but we have another upcoming webinar with the ACT that's focused just on that, so you can look for that. So our agenda today is for you to really walk away knowing the types of colleges that are out there, the things that they consider, and how you can navigate the research process so you can start developing your list and the considerations to actually making that list. Um, so I am now going to hand it over to Karen, who's going to take us through the first section. Thank you so much, Anjali. <clears throat> I'm so glad to be here this evening to be connecting with families, students, grown-ups, counselors, people who've joined us for this evening. This is a big, exciting project when you get ready to kind of gear up for your college research. Um, I would ask all the grown-ups who were watching to sort of remember their first big research project and what it takes to sort of um, cast a wide net, ask a lot of questions, and spend a lot of time, right? And we all know that the more energy and research you put in at the beginning, the better the result is going to be at the end. So I wanna talk first about the types of schools, sort of what is it if you decide that you're gonna go on to college, a two-year college or a four-year college after you're finished with high school, what are your options? What different kinds of schools are there? This sounds like a really basic question, but it's an important piece of information for you to consider. Think about schools that are private colleges. These are schools that um, are funded through tuition, are funded through donor dollars, um, may or may not be funded through grants and foundations as well. Um, these are sort of some common names that we hear uh, that would count as a private college, would be something, um, you know, the Ivy League would count as private colleges, um, smaller liberal arts schools that you might be familiar with geographically. Um, the part of country where I live, we have schools like Trinity University and Austin College. They're smaller private colleges. Um, schools on the West Coast that might sound familiar to you would be Loyola Marymount, um, maybe Redlands, something like that that is a smaller, a private college. Another category is the larger public colleges. And these also are names that circulate a lot when we talk about schools. These are larger state-funded schools. They also require tuition, but the um, significant amount of their funding comes from through the state, and they are public schools. Uh, University of Michigan, UT in Austin, the UC system. These are examples of public colleges. And they can often also be known or described as research institutions, right? There's a lot going on at these schools. There's a lot of fantastic teaching and learning, and there's a lot of other things going on as well. They have graduate programs, they have research programs. They're big, vibrant spaces. Another thing to consider when you're looking at the different types of colleges are curricular choices. Some schools, you will declare a major when you're applying, and that's the path that you will be on. Some schools have open curriculums where you're designing your own course of study and really figuring out what it is that's interesting to you and running with it. Some schools operate on block schedules. So for 18 days in a row, you take the same class for a long period of time with the same group of people, and then that class is finished and you start a different class. Sounds really, really different probably than what you're used to or maybe even than what you've envisioned when you've considered college, but what a great and exciting way to experience a curriculum. And then we also have community colleges. And community colleges are also publicly funded schools that offer two-year programs. And that's also a wonderful thing to consider and explore. It's also a place to start if you want to do a little bit of coursework at a community college and then transfer into a different school that you're a different school that's on your path. The things to think about though, no matter when or what you start to do, is what matters to you, 
right? Again, grown-ups, think back to that research project and all the questions you have to answer. You have to figure out what your priorities are. I work with students ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade. Uh, right about now is when I'm starting with my juniors on these college considerations. And I have them rank things. What are the things that matter to you? What's important to you? And I want you to be flexible with this ranking, right? The difference between a junior in the fall of junior year and the spring of junior year and the fall of senior year, that's a different person. That's a really important 18 months. One of the things I would encourage grownups to remember also is the developmental stage that the students are in when they're entering this. And so the questions might seem a little bit all over the place, and that's okay. They're doing the deep learning that they need to do. I encourage my students to think about what size of school do you want to go to? What location do you want to do? Do you want to be on the East Coast, the West Coast, in the mountains, by the beach? Are you interested in rural or suburban? There's so many different options. And I'm the counselor that when you give me a very specific location, I'm going to name three schools that aren't in that location because I'm going to push back as you continue to learn about yourself and what it is that's interesting to you. You're going to want to consider what's available in terms of the curriculum. If you really, really, really want to major in Russian literature, then you need to be searching for schools that have that major. If that's not something that's a deciding factor to you, if you have no ideas yet about what you want to major in, it is doing this research that might spark some interest for you. So the process is just ongoing. You want to think about how are you going to spend your time at the school? What are the future career opportunities? These are things that you need to consider, and I encourage you to take notes because you're going to learn a lot of information, and it's going to be really important for you to keep track of it all. Think about non-negotiable considerations also. It might be things that um, mean a lot to you, but might not mean something to someone else, and that's okay. What is it when you're on the campus that you see? Are there, is there a political climate? Is there um, fun stuff going on on a Saturday night? What are the things that are interesting to you? And this is where you can really zero in and figure out that's important to me and it's okay if it's important to you. With 4,000 colleges out there, like Anjali mentioned, there is a school, there is more than one school that meets these considerations. From there, you've got kind of what your priorities are you figured out what's interesting to you, you figured out what you might want to pursue, what kind of space you want to be in, and it's time to start asking some questions to help you with the next step. One of the biggest questions, which I know might sound a little silly since you're in the middle of an ACT and college-wise webinar, is why do you want to go to college? Like, let's figure that out, right? Let's figure out what it is that you see college doing for you and you doing for the college. It's important to remember the more you know about what you're looking for and why, the better your list is going to be and the easier your research is going to be because you're gonna go right down a path that's gonna help you figure out, oh, right, that's why I want to go to college. Another thing to ask is, are you ready for school? Are you ready for college? We have a structure where at the end of 12th grade, people graduate and some people go off to college and some people pause. Some people choose something different. Some people pause and return. So this is a good thing to think about also. This is also a great question to engage in with your grownups, family members, faculty members, an employer, people who know you well, you can get a lot of interesting feedback from them about when you start to ask these kinds of questions about yourself. So you don't have to just rely on yourself, right, uh, to figure these kinds of things out. This is a good thing to have in conversation with other people. One of the questions to consider about how you've been doing your best learning, how have you done your best learning, I think this is a great one to ask. Uh, somebody who has actually taught you in class in the class. So some of us do really well in a more Socratic way. Some of us do well in large lecture halls. Some of us really enjoy discourse. Some of us really enjoy the written word. Whatever it is, what do you enjoy and how do you do your best learning? Maybe that block schedule I mentioned earlier is a great match for you. And what do you want to know more about? This is another way to sort of get to know yourself. 
what have you enjoyed in high school? What do you wanna to continue to pursue in high school? And then a little tip, I'm here to tell you, there are things going on at colleges academically that you haven't even heard about yet, and that's okay. When you get to your college, that academic world will open up and it's okay. So when it comes to this research, it's important to learn and reflect, but to also keep an open mind. You wanna consider your absolute perfect environment. What do you like about your high school right now that you'd like to see at college? What do you not like about your high school that you'd rather not have repeated in college? That can mean lots of different things. That can mean physical space. That can go back to the what I was saying earlier about the delivery. What is it that you see yourself doing? Or where is it that you see yourself doing your best work? You have to have a conversation about budget. And as Anjali said earlier, we're not talking deeply about that here in this webinar. And there is another webinar later on that topic. But it is important to be realistic and to work within that budget conversation when you're building your list. You also want to think about career aspirations. It's OK if you don't know. This kind of research brings these sorts of things out. And then what kind of community is best for you? Are you interested in a large space with diverse opinions? Are you interested in a smaller space that has a more common thread? 4,000 schools, you don't have to research all 4,000 of them. <laughs> You're going to have ways to narrow that list for yourself. But there's so many great questions that you can ask yourself. The research process is really about the re research and it's about reflection as well. So as you're going through and learning about the schools, there's a couple of things for you to reflect on. I think it's important when you are considering the schools um, that you ask the right kinds of questions about the schools. Ask smarter questions, right? So like any research project, you're like at the top of the funnel, right? You're pouring all of these schools' names in, you're doing the research, you're asking the questions, and you're narrowing your list, right? And Questions to ask yourself to really zero in on what matters. It's a little bit tough not to get wrapped up in the discourse around very well-known schools, but I would encourage you to consider things of not like what's the best school out there, but what's the best school for you? Where are you gonna be able to thrive? What's the best match for you as an individual? I would ask you also not to think about like the right college again, it's only right if it's meeting your priorities and where you will be successful. And we try real hard not to think about a good school and a bad school. The question has to be, is it good for me? Does that school have strengths that meet my priorities? And the more you ask these kinds of questions, the better list you're gonna have built for yourself. And guess what? These schools are all gonna ask you when it comes to applying, why do you wanna come here? You're gonna have so many great answers. If you dig in and figure this out for yourself now, you're gonna have great answers for those supplemental essays when you're going through the application process. As I mentioned before, some schools will expect you to apply to a program, to apply to a specific major. And it's important to remember that some majors are more competitive than others are. Some schools with open, open curriculums and some schools don't, that don't expect you to declare or don't want you to declare, that is one path. But if you're looking at a larger school or a school that has this requirement, it's important for you to do the research about what the numbers are related to your particular program. Because some schools might have one admissions rate overall and a different admissions, over, uh, admissions rate for programs such as computer science, business, engineering programs, a lot of the STEM. Where I live, the flagship school in the state of Texas has really, really intense computer science, engineering, and business rates, application rate, admissions rates, but then different admissions rates for other programs. This is a research project for you, and you have to keep it in mind. So you want to go back to the school's websites and stay up to date with what their data is, because I know there's many of you out there who are thinking of those exact, same, those exact majors, computer science, business, STEM. Um, the rates can change, so be sure that you're keeping up with it. This is a rather specific excuse me, specific question to ask yourself, but it's an important one as you're um, building your list and considering where you're gonna want to apply. Remember that schools engage in holistic 
admissions. You're going to be building your application. You're going to be working on how to best present yourself. And you have a bunch of stuff already with you, right? You, are, you have those tools. You have got your academic transcript. The schools are going to consider that. What are your what are your what is your GPA? What are your grades? Are you accessing the most rigorous coursework at your school? What are you doing with yourself academically? You're going to have standardized test scores that you'll submit. You're going to have extracurriculars. How do you spend your time? Are you being the best version of yourself that you can be? Are you really thriving in lots and lots of different areas? Is there one particular thing that you're super committed to? Both of those things are okay, but you're gonna have this extracurricular portrait of yourself uh, that you're gonna present to the school so they understand how you spend your time. Part of this is them being curious about what kind of person you are. Like, are you gonna be a good roommate? Are you gonna contribute on campus? Are you gonna stand up for an injustice? What are the things, how is it that you spend your time? What are the things that make you, you? You're gonna have your letters of recommendation that come from the teachers. You do not have to get a letter of rec from someone that you're earning an A in their class. I suggest you get a recommendation from someone who's seen you grow, who has seen you thrive, who has seen you um, help others, right? What do you like in that classroom? Uh, teachers are the only people who can really answer that question. And so that's why schools are seeking information from them. And then finally, you'll have your essays. And your essays are a wonderful way to represent yourself. You might not think of the word wonderful um, in the fall of your senior year when you're building your applications, but I promise you, it is a wonderful way to sort of turn over all of the research that you've been, start that you've been doing to figure out a great list, to find schools that are a great match for you, and then to present yourself in an essay and see, look, these are my priorities, school A, Aren't you lucky that you meet all of my priorities? Because here I am, an applicant at your school. I think it's important to remember we frame the college process often as students looking for schools. And I think it's important to remember also that the schools are looking for students. And so are you finding the schools that are looking for somebody just like you? That's kind of, that's one of the important questions to consider also. Schools are looking for curious people. They're looking for engaged people. They're looking for community builders. They're looking for students who are gonna to come to their campus, thrive and succeed academically, but also thrive and succeed within the culture and the community of the program. I encourage a generous on-ramp. I encourage you to consider uh, whatever grade you're in. I know we have a lot of seniors here, but if you are a junior or a sophomore, I encourage you to take advantage of the time ahead of you to kind of get in there and dig around. Allison is going to talk a little bit more about specifics, about how it is that you can actually get this sort of information. Thank you. Hi, friends. It is so lovely to be here tonight. Um, and I have to say, I was speaking last night to a group in a packed uh, performing arts center at a high school local to me and there was a lot of laughter and a lot of clapping so i'm just going to personally assume that you're all laughing and clapping along at home um with all my hilarious jokes thank you so much karen um i want to start with just a little bit of the detail that as a high school student i was not um a high school student i would have been excited to work with as a senior i did really terrible research i really kind of threw darts and got lucky and found a great college for me but Karen, listening to you made me want to go back to high school, not even my college counselor, so I could do the college search again. Um, so I just want to throw that out there. Karen did a great job of laying out the questions that we ask, ask ourselves about who we are and what college is going to mean to us. But I think that then we have to turn that um, self-reflection into actually digging into colleges and figuring out here's who I am and here's what I need and what are colleges going to do? Um, how can I match those things up? So I like to sit down with students in the very beginning, and we have to remember that this is a very um nerve-wracking process and it's very unknown and so when you start thinking about college if you don't have an idea about where you want to go or you are unsure or when someone says where you want to go to college you have no great that's exactly where you're supposed to be and this graphic i think gives us a really clear path of what building a college list is going to look like so we're going to start very broad and then narrow the group of schools as we go those questions that karen laid out earlier are really going to help you understand what you're looking for and then we start to match those up which with colleges that are a great fit um, one of the things I caution students about early is to not box yourself into a corner. If you do that, you're flipping this model and starting with a very narrow list of schools. I'm based in Southern California, 
and where I live, you pick a team, it's USC or UCLA, you pick when you're born and that's your team forever. When my students come in and say, UCLA is where I have to go, they're setting themselves, some, themselves up for a very narrow-minded process. So the broader we can start, the better. Um, I wanna also note that your research is gonna start at a high level and then it is gonna get fine-tuned because you don't know as much in the beginning. You don't quite know what your research is gonna look like. So let's talk about how we dig in. The first step here is window shopping. So imagine me walking outside of a store where I can't really afford anything, but I wanna look at all the beautiful things in the windows. When you are window shopping colleges, this is really trying to understand what college is about because all the impressions you have, all the experiences you have had so far are from movies, they're from TV, media, books, things that you have absorbed, and they're not necessarily representative of what an actual college experience is like. I can say my college experience was not anything like Legally Blonde, um, and probably the movies that you've seen are not exact replicas of what college looks like. And so much of this is figuring out what might my college experience be like. So when you start to think about this, you're gonna start to really just tap into different areas. And when you think about how you're gonna research what your options are, I want you to really think about how you learn. When people ask me, Karen asked this earlier, what's a good school? What's a good school for me? I, there isn't a good school. Is what's a good option for you? What are the good resources for you when you think about how you learn? So if you're a student who really likes to annotate your books and you highlight an underline and post-it note, and that's how you read your favorite novels, that may be how you research colleges. If you're somebody who does a lot of online research and you have a thousand tabs open at all times, guilty, that may be how you do your research. None of these are good or bad options. There's no better or worse, but what is going to work for you? Um, and when we start to think about research tools, the internet obviously is amazing, but I also want to remind students to take advantage of what is around you. So almost anywhere you live in the U.S., there is a college relatively nearby. And I think being able to explore um, and, and tap into college options, even if they're not the ones you think you want, are things that students don't think about very often. So we have a college right down the road. Chapman University is 20 minutes from me. I encourage all my students to go visit Chapman University and go visit UCI. It'll give you a sense of what are two different types of schools. Even if you don't think you want to go there, you get to try them on for size and decide if it might be something that you're actually interested in. It also saves the money on a flight. It is not feasible for most of us to fly around the country and visit every college we think sounds interesting. And so between our online resources and local college visits, you really can start to map and understand what another institution might be like using the resources that you have close by. So let's get a little further into this. When I actually walk into that fancy store where I can't buy anything in the window, I'm gonna walk by and touch everything a little bit. You just wanna, what, what seems cool? What might be cute on me? This is what college research looks like at the next level, is really starting to dig in and browse the aisles. And I want you to think about this type of research in two different ways. The first is filtered research. And so this kind of top bucket, the admissions website is a great tool and resource. Um, academic programs on campus are gonna have great websites. They're gonna tell you what's going on, events. What are the things that are happening? Tour guides are another thing that fits into this bucket. But those direct um, sources from colleges are also filtered. These are also most likely to have the most marketing language. And their job, if they're marketing a website, is to, or marketing experience, is to say, we're going to be a great experience for you. That is what they want you to think. And so you've got to also use some of these unfiltered resources. Now, this has been one of the most exciting things. What a nerdy, embarrassing thing for me to say. This has been one of the most exciting things that I think has evolved as college research has evolved is your direct access to student feedback. So there are, there are websites that collect student reviews, just like Yelp would for restaurants. I know teenagers, you guys don't use Yelp. I'm so sorry. I still check restaurants on there. But when you are reading a review online, people only re leave reviews for something when they're really, really happy or they're really, really frustrated and upset. And so these student reviews can give you a very different snapshot into campus. They also tend to be a little bit more extreme. As a tour guide, I was a tour guide, I know you're shocked to hear that. As a tour guide, we had a very specific route that we walked through campus. We did not walk potential students and their families by dumpsters. That was a rule. As a tour guide, you'd never walk by a dumpster. This is a curated look at a campus. And the flip side of that is some of these direct from student experiences or language. I also wanna highlight student newspapers, student communications. There are so many ways to hear what students are saying directly um, that you don't have to just rely on what the colleges are saying. I think this unfiltered language and knowledge can be really helpful and really powerful, but I also caution students to take it with a grain of salt because one student's experience is one student's experience. And every, every year I have a student who is looking at a school that might be a great fit for them and goes, oh, I had a friend who didn't like it there. 
that may be true, but your experience may be different, which is true of every student review that you look at. And every student's experience is going to be different than yours because you are unique and different humans. That's just how this works. One note I want to highlight. Um, I talk a lot of trash about college rankings um, and mostly about US News and World Report. But I do want to say that not all college rankings are bad. There are rankings that can be very valuable. And if we go back to some of what Karen was talking about earlier, really identifying what are the things that are most important for you in your search and your college experience, let that guide what types of rankings are useful to you. So one of the reasons I get frustrated with US News and World Report is because they, a lot of the methodology of the rankings is looking at things that I don't believe impact student experience at all. The rate of donors donating back to campus or faculty salaries don't actually change how I as a student feel sitting in a discussion in a classroom. But if you look instead at um, social mobility rankings, or if you're looking at Georgetown does a great job at uh, return on investment rankings and in terms of academic programs, those can be valuable. So what I would advise you to do with rankings is instead of just taking the ranking at face value, go look at the methodology. What, are, what do they actually care about in those rankings? And are those things that you also care about? If not, we need to find rankings that make a little bit more sense for you. So now we're actually gonna put all these pieces together. You've done the self-reflection, you've done some digging on your own and started to think about where you wanna be. Now we actually have to build a college list. So this is the first thing that I talk with my students about. Um, building a balanced college list means we have schools in each of these buckets. And I wanna talk about what they each are. My favorite is the green bucket. Um, the likely bucket, these are schools where you are likely to be admitted. And we know that because these are schools where you or your academic profile is higher than the students that they're admitting on average. So when you look at average admitted students, their GPAs, their grades, their test scores, their course rigor, all these things, you have a higher academic profile, high enough that we think you have a pretty good shot of getting in. This is never a guarantee because if any of this was a guarantee, I would be a psychic and that's a different job. But these are, these are schools that we feel are most likely to say yes to, to you. It's also worth noting that your likely schools are the schools that are most likely to have money for you. Um, and we'll talk again about financial aid in that upcoming webinar, but when I see students who are awarded the biggest chunks of free money from their colleges just for being a good student, they're almost always from that likely bucket, which is why we love them. Your target schools are right in the middle. So these are schools where you look like the kids who were admitted last year on paper. In terms of academic profile, you are a match. Now, the reason these are target schools is because you're aligned with their typical admitted student, but we don't know for sure, one way or another, whether this is going to be a school you're admitted to. Another thing that happens with target schools is there are mitigating circumstances, sounds dramatic, but institutional priorities can change. Um, for example, the University of Colorado Boulder is having quite a year in the football world. I mean, I don't follow football, but I know everybody's talking about Boulder. Schools or students for whom Boulder was a target last year or a match, Boulder may be a reach this year because they're gonna see an increase in applications because of all the press they're getting. So those target schools can change a little bit. I also noticed that every year the school who wins the NCAA basketball tournament will also see an increase in applications and that can affect where those schools are. A target is where you're a match. Your reach schools, there are two different types of reach schools. The most common that we see is a reach school where your academic profile is not quite as high as the students who are typically admitted. Now, the other kind of reach school, and these are the names that you've heard of the most, Stanford, Princeton, Yale, um, are schools that are reach schools for everybody. So no matter how high your GPA, no matter how many AP classes, you added 12,000 on the SAT, it is still gonna be a reach school. And that is not a personal thing, it is just numbers. So as you're doing your research, you're gonna think about where these schools might fall for you on this list. As you actually start building this list, now we have to put these pieces together. So we've done our self-reflection, we've started to do research and think about what colleges make sense for me. And now we gotta put these pieces into an actual list of schools. I very highly, aggressively underline, bold, italicized, highlighted, recommend you stick to between eight and 12 colleges. I know that sounds, um, for some folks, it sounds like a really low number. I had a student yesterday go, are you sure I shouldn't apply to 20? And I said, Christopher, please don't apply to 20. Eight and 12 colleges lets you really land in the sweet spot. We want you to have enough options that you have great places to choose from. And we don't want so many that, A, you don't have the ability to make a decision between 20 colleges. We also don't want you to have so much work that you are spread too thin across those applications and can't take care of them. So when we talk about this eight to 12, this is enough to give you great options and not so much that you're gonna be buried under the weight of applying to college, which is not what we're going for. So when we talk about creating that balanced list of schools, for me, that looks like two to three schools in my reach category. 
it looks like four to six schools in that target bucket and maybe two to three more schools in the likely bucket. That may change for students. Sometimes I have students who have four likelies they love and only two targets. That is totally fine. But we want to make sure that the target and likely buckets outweigh the reach bucket. That is very, very important. Now, some students go, I want to apply to just, I just want to apply to more reach schools just to see. It's like the lottery, right? If I buy more tickets, I'm more likely to win. No, absolutely, that is not true. When you apply to more reach schools, you're often also applying to more schools that require more application work. You're also potentially setting yourself up to get a slew of no's in the spring. And no matter what a student tells me in September, it's fine, I can apply to 12 reach schools. I won't be sad if they all say no. It doesn't feel good to get a bunch of no letters in the spring, no matter how tough you are. And so that balance list also makes sure that, yeah, you're gonna hear no from a couple of colleges. I think if you don't hear no, you weren't shooting high enough, but that balance means that we also land rehab options. Now, way back to Karen's initial reflection questions, she talked about the why for each college. Most colleges, and I will say most private colleges, are going to ask you directly, why are you applying to our school? So I'll shout out Texas schools, TCU, and SMU both ask, why our institution? And if you have done a great job with your research, you're going to have a really thoughtful why for that school. Now, we already talked to start broad and narrow it down. Please throw the doors open. We can always whittle the list back, but we can't apply to or find a great match that you haven't considered. So really throwing those doors open is important. And this number five is one of the things I talk about most frequently with my students because sometimes you have a place that you've just fallen in love with for whatever reason. And making sure that we have a list of good options and not one magical school is really important. I, I have to tell you guys, there is not just one place where you can go be successful and have a great life. There are truly hundreds of places that you can go and have a great academic experience and make the best friend of your life and and leave kicking and screaming after four years and then get a job where you get to talk about it all day long. There are lots and lots of places who can be that for you. So I need you to really unwind yourself from the idea that it's just one place that can take great care of you. And the last piece and, and arguably the most important is to consider affordability. So when we talk about college lists and we talk about, I'm gonna jump backward without permission in the slides. When we talk about that likely category, if it is a likely school that you're not actually gonna go to, that is not a great likely school. Also, if it's a likely school you can't afford, or if this list is full of places that you can't afford, we don't have a good college list. So when I have students who get to their decisions in the spring and hear all the places I got in and I hadn't thought about cost and now I can't actually afford any of these or I can't afford them without bankrupting my family, that's terrible and it puts you in a really, really tough spot. And so consider affordability at the front end and not at the, not at the tail end. That said, now I'm gonna undo what I just said because one of the lines I love from my dean when I worked in admission is that a college campus is a little bit like an airplane. Stay with me. In that everybody paid a different price for their seat. Every student on campus has a different financial aid package, has a different amount of need. And so I don't want you to write off a school that could be a great fit just because the sticker price is high, but make sure that affordability factors into your college checklist. So we talk about your checklist and what are the things that are important to you, but you also have to pay attention to what's happening on the college's side. Karen, I think did a great job unpacking how majors can be a part of this. But as you're thinking about your schools, you have to think about, is this actually feasible for me academically? Is this a place I could get in? And then also how tough is it gonna be to apply to this college? Now I have students occasionally, and I'll pick on Texas for just a second. I have students who go, I just wanna, I just wanna try for, for um, UT or Texas A&M. I just wanna throw out my application and see. And that is totally okay. But if you're considering a school that is very, very, very selective, that is a big reach for you, and that requires a lot of work in the application process, which the Texas schools, love them, do, is it the right choice to apply to that school? Is it the right place to spend your time, energy, and money in your applications? It doesn't mean no, it just means you have to be thoughtful about where and how you spend that time. If you are having trouble trying to figure out if a school is realistic for you, ask for help. There is a lot of information released from colleges that can help fill in the blanks on whether a school is um, attainable for you, but your school counselor can be a great resource. Obviously folks like us, but there are a lot of ways to help um, make sure that you're lining your priorities and your needs up with a list of colleges that are gonna make sense for you. And the last thing I wanna cover before I hand it back to Anjali, these are my, if you're gonna take notes, write these three things down. Seniors, I know you're in here. Right now, tonight, when you end this webinar and you leave the meeting, decide what your first step is gonna be with college research because senior year is a lot, it's very busy. It's very busy and you're just trying to get through high school. 
it is not going to get any less busy. And I don't say that to stress you out, but I want you to make this application work something you can chip away at slowly over time, as opposed to panicking in November and crying through Thanksgiving dinner, which is not a great way for us to give things. The second thing I want to highlight here, in high school, I think that we do a lot of what our friends do. We go to the places our friends go, we wear the same clothes, we listen to the same music. That is part of how you bond and how you connect. And this is the first process in your life that really has to be super individual. The colleges that are great fit fits for your friends may not be a great fit for you. And so you really have to look inward and decide what is gonna make sense for you and then be confident in that decision. And the last thing, and this is seniors in particular and juniors, this is a great time to get in the habit of this, make yourself a plan. So we talked about there is application work to be done, but you can break it into small, into small chunks. Use a planner, use a Google spreadsheet, uh, write things down if you're the note-taking, highlighting student that I talked about earlier, but make a plan so that you can work through this process calmly and rationally or as calmly and rationally as you can without being in a panic at the last minute. So please don't wait. Don't wait to start research. Don't wait to start thinking about who you are and what you want. And don't wait to start making a plan for what is going to be the next big adventure you get to go on. How, like what a gift. That's so cool and exciting. I just got really excited for all of you to head to college. Anjali, take it away before I get emotional. Wonderful. Thank you so much to Karen and Allison for sharing their many years of collective wisdom. Um, I know there's a lot of seniors here on this call, so I'd want to underscore what Allison said, that there absolutely is time for you to curate that list. Double check it after this webinar. Make sure it aligns with everything that was brought up, um, and you will be in a good place and find that right fit for you. Now, we know that there are likely some of you who are interested in learning more about college-wise, um, so we wanted to tell you over the next minute a little bit about how you can continue to hear from us. Um, so we do have dedicated counseling programs. So if you're interested in working directly with the counselor, this is fantastic to really go through the full application cycle. Um, and also for younger students, we can work with you as you build your profile. And we also have um, experts on staff, such as financial aid experts. Um, we have a lot of options for quick help as well. So. Uh, you can uh, take one of the quizzes that we'll send out, give you more information, or reach out to you with a page of options of things like getting your essay reviewed, or even doing one hour with a counselor where you can really gut check that school list. Um, so you can look through that page and see if there's any good options so you can get that expert advice as you polish your applications. And then, of course, we have lots of wonderful resources that are completely free that we would love to share with you if you were looking for that right now. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually launch a poll here that asks you um, about those options and we'll follow up with you accordingly. Um, and there's a couple of stats here below of our students and their success. And what we're most proud of is that families go on to refer us. Um, so nine out of 10 families have told their friends about CollegeWise. Um, which is incredible. So um, I've launched this poll here. You can just answer if you'd love um, some more information on those one-on-one -on -one services, if you want to learn more about that last minute type work, especially for seniors, um, if you're not looking for support or if you're actually a counselor or educator, um, then we can reach out to you about our school offerings as well. Um, so go ahead, click that option and then hit submit and we'll send you some more information for you. So I'll leave that on for about 30 seconds again. All right, seems like the submissions are rolling in. Again, I'll give it a little bit more time. Um, we'll reach out and also give some information about the next webinar that's coming up in a few weeks on financial aid too. Okay, last chance here, if you wanna go ahead and hit submit, um, do so now. If you are interested in kind of fast tracking the process, we have a QR code. You can fill out some questions and we will point you in the right direction. Um, and now we have a little bit of time for question and answer. Um, so I'd love to turn it over to Karen and then Allison. 
Um, if you could tell us a story about a student and how you help them find the right fit, how do you actually start those conversations, help them navigate it? Um, and what did they do to really get to that right place of knowing what was the right school for them? Sure. Um, thank you, Anjali. You know, I can think of one student who she came to me. Um, I've been working with her since she was in 10th grade and we've done extensive research and she has been told her entire life uh, what a strong STEM student she is and that she should be an engineer. And she really embraced that and she's done a beautiful job and she is indeed a very strong STEM student and engineer. And she understood that she would be a bio, would apply as a biomedical engineering student. She is someone who is on calculus HI or whatever, whatever the A, B, B, C, like she is done with a, a lot of math, She's very, very strong in math. And she realized through research, she hadn't really considered being a math major and being apply in studying applied math and learning about math in the world. So this was not a radical shift, right? From a biomedical engineer to, it's not like she's the one who went off to go do Russian literature, but she did do this research and she came to me and she said, Karen, have you ever heard of applied math? And she did this deep dive into all of the schools. She is applying across the board in this way. And she got that way through research. She got that way through really figuring out, well, I'm gonna click on this. And then I'm gonna click on that. And then what is happening in this department? And it takes a while, it takes a while. And I, I love that she took a step back from what she understood she was going to be doing, kept an open mind and said, I think right now I wanna study this instead. And I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do with it as I grow as a college student. Um, and she's off to the races. She is in the, the flagship schools in her state and she is off to the races. It's very exciting. I think another student that I consider is the student who wasn't, who was not really ready yet. And I um, am so glad that the students are here with us today to sort of prepare themselves and take advantage of the time that they have to curate their lists and do some more research but a young lady who wasn't really sure what she wanted to do and wasn't really there yet in terms of understanding what her next steps were. So when we went through the process, she did not have as much success and acceptance as she had hoped, um, but she regrouped and she did more research and she figured out, wait a minute, in her appeal process, she wrote an essay that really captured what it was that she wanted to study. Um, she wrote an incredible, incredible essay about houseplants and um, framed how she had learned about herself um, by taking care of houseplants, um, went through an independent review, was accepted at the first choice school that she wanted to go to, and is thriving there as an environmental science major. Two very different examples, right, in terms of what are you ready to learn? What kind of reflection do you need to go through? So I always think about those two students um, and the amount of research and reflection that they did combined with keeping an open mind. I think that that can be super important. House plants, I love that. Um, that's Those are very helpful stories. So Allison, I'd like to turn to you and ask about someone who is a senior at this point of the year. Um, how are you able to help them with with their school list with not that much time left? I mm, I probably shouldn't say this out loud, but those are some of my favorite kids to work with actually, because we've gotten rid of all the, um, there isn't time to do a lot of hand wringing with seniors. Like this is the rubber has hit the road, it's time to go. Um, and what, a student a couple of years ago who came in this point in the year was convinced, ready to tattoo Seattle University's logo on her face. It was a done deal, she was ready to go. And she came in like, it's September of senior year. I already know where I'm going. I just need your help to do X, Y, and Z. Um, and and I did what Karen did, which is ask a bunch of questions. And in those initial first two conversations, I went, wait a minute. I actually think you're supposed to go somewhere else and was able to convince her, but to look in the last few weeks at some of these other options. And she ended up um, an art major at the University of Puget Sound with almost a full ride, a school that she had not heard of 
before she started looking at colleges. And it was one of those that was a big fat yes to every single thing on her list. Um, and the thing that I love from that student, and this is, I think, not uncommon for college counselors, is to get to the end of the process with a student. And Maddie, her name was Maddie, um, she said, I would, have, I would have never found this school without you. And for me, obviously, that feels like a huge win. But I think we go all the way back to that. There's 4,000 colleges out there. Like, it is very hard to be able to wrap your brain around all of them. And so wherever you are, jump in and let's start having the conversation now. If you're a senior, I had to talk about Maddie a minute. But if you're a senior, you make a plan for every, what is every weekend between now and November 30th. And I know that sounds depressing. I know it's kind of a bummer and you feel like maybe nothing fun will happen. But to lay out that timeline allows you to crank through work and still preserve the rest of your senior year because you want this process to be thoughtful and intentional and then you want it to end. Applying to college should not last forever. And so if you make a plan and use your time now, I would meet with that student every week. They would have homework every week and they would be done if they did everything I said by the time we get to Thanksgiving. So if you make a plan and you're thoughtful about it, I think you can be in very, very good shape, even though it is late for seniors. Yeah, I think the thoughtful and intentional is so um, helpful. And I think by the fact that all of you here tonight are on this webinar, it means that you're thinking through this and you're making that time and effort. Um, to learn about different schools and how to think about it, which is fantastic. Um, and there's a lot of misconceptions out there. I'll, I'll share one story of a student I worked with. Um, he was adamant that he wanted to go to a top engineering school. But when he spent a little time reflecting with me on where he thrived, it was really small group settings. Um, but he had uh, automatically written off liberal arts colleges because he said they're too small, they don't have engineering. So we talked about some of the programs that liberal arts colleges have in partnership with engineering schools, where you can actually start at a liberal arts college for two years, and then you do two or three years um, with an engineering dedicated program. And so those are programs that are so small and you, you don't necessarily learn about at first, um, you have to do a bit of digging, but I think that time is absolutely worth it. Um, so yes, again, everyone on tonight, thank you for joining and for being intentional in this process um, and trying to find that right fit for you. We are all rooting for you here. Um, we are excited for you to find that path. And sometimes there is a bit of disappointment, but you can get back up and you will make the most of where you go. Um, I will also love to thank ACT again for having us and I will pass it back to Kelly. Thank you guys so much. Thank you CollegeWise and our amazing presenters tonight. All of your insight were so valuable and I know this is gonna be a big help to students as they figure out what they want to do during that college process. Um, before we say goodbye, I have two last items that I want to cover. The first is that after this webinar ends, there's going to be a survey that pops up. We would greatly appreciate it if you would take the five minutes or less to let us know how we did tonight and how we can better help you in the future. The second exciting item is that some of our presenters already touched on this, is that we have an upcoming webinar with College Wives in October um, that will touch on paying for college. So if you're curious about how to pay for college, what building a college list looks like um, based on finances, things like that, we will be touching on those October 17th at 6 p.m. If you haven't registered already, you can do so now. You'll find that registration link in the resources box on your screen. And again, thank you all for joining us this evening. Thank you CollegeWise for being here with us and have a great night.